All right, what is up, guys? This is Ivan from BrennyBuzz.com. And today I'm going to show you how to control a stepper motor using only a potentiometer. Uh, this was a question that was asked in the YouTube comments, and I made a little uh, setup here, as you'll see uh, later. And um, the, the thing with uh, using a pot to control a stepper is that most pots, they tend to fluctuate between values. Uh, so basically they're not like uh, digital uh, like this in this video we use the uh, rotary encoder which is a digital uh, signal. Uh, analog uh, pots basically they use uh, an analog value so they can fluctuate and they can move around even though we're not touching it right now. Uh, so I'll show you in the code how I did that so the motor would not go back and forth too much and uh, I hope that answers uh, the questions. So let me switch the camera. Uh, we're using the same setup that we did uh, in another video. So we got the stepper motor, a little, uh, uh, a little gear. Uh, we got a belt going all the way around. And I put my little ruler here at zero for the belt clip. And on the breadboard, we have a regular 10K pot, a little nano, and the um, easy driver stepper motor that we used a lot in other videos. Uh, so connections are very simple. So basically what's going to happen as I move the pot, I want the stepper to react at the same time without less delay as we can. So let's cut here, let's look at the code, and I'll show you how I made it so that the um, fluctuation of a, a regular potentiometer uh, to read it in code and actually have it more stabilized. So let's go check that out. All right, so we're on the code. The code is very short today, so uh, we won't spend too much time here. So let's start from the top. So we're including the Excel stepper library. Uh, we've used that library before. You can check out those videos uh, on how we've used it. And uh, after that, we do the setup of the library, basically telling it which pin is connected to what. Uh, the one is for, because we're using the easy driver interface, and the two and three is the nano pins that are connected to which pin on the easy driver. Uh, then let's go down a little bit. I got three variables here. One to store the current position, the previous position, and a move position. And we'll see that a little bit later. And, well, a little bit later right now because this code is very short. Uh, so then we do a main setup, and we set the max speed and the acceleration that we want the motor to go. Uh, set the speed fast enough so that it follows because you can turn a pot fairly fast. And acceleration should be at least equal to the max speed because we don't want a ramp up and ramp down. We want to respond right away. Uh, so you can play with these values depending on the type of motor you're using or the torque uh, might be different. Uh, so basically all, only these two values uh, you need to change and test with your setup. And then the main loop, very, very short. Like I said, a pot basically can fluctuate even though you're not touching it because it's, a, it's an analog device. And if you just code it as is, read and move, uh, what might happen is that even though you're not moving the pot, uh, your stepper motor might jitter because it'll move from one to another. Uh, so the way I did it here is that <clears throat> I do an analog read of A4, which is the uh, potentiometer um, uh, signal wire is connected to A4. So I do an analog read and I put that in the variable val. And then I check if the val gr is greater than previous plus six, or, that's an or statement, val is smaller than previous minus six. So I check that the move that we did since the last um, analog read is that it's actually at least greater than six or smaller than six. Because the jitter on my pot, when I checked it out in the serial monitor, it never really fluctuate more than four or five. Uh, so let's say I'm not touching it, the reading might be 100, and it might jump 104, or it might jump 96. So by putting six here, I'm not moving the motor unless the move is significant. And that way I am avoiding the jitter. And then I say the variable new val is gonna be equal to the map of value, which is zero to 1023, which is a normal analog read value. And I put that to zero and 1600. Uh, because the easy driver by default will do one eighth of a step. And I know, and you can check that video where I explain a little bit more about uh, calculating rotation and stuff like that of a stepper motor if you want. <clears throat> but basically, uh, since it takes 200 full steps to do one shaft rotation of the stepper, and the uh, easy driver by default will do one eighth of a step, so 200 times eight 
equals 1600 for a full rotation at one eighth of a step. Now you can change that value so that when you rotate the pot from zero to 1023, if you want to do two rotation, then you would double this to 3200. And then I say, well, okay, stepper run to new position, the new val, which is the map, and I say previous is equal to val to store that new previous value so that when we read again, it will check for that. And that's it, that's all, uh, that's all uh, there is to it. Um, it could be modified, could be made better. Uh, this is an easy way to get started, and um, I hope you guys play around with that and actually uh, adapt it for your needs. So let's go check out how that works. All right, so we're back. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect the power to the Easy Driver, and then I'm going to connect power to my Uno, uh, my Nano, sorry, like so. And now everything is ready. So I'm going to try to move the pot so you guys can see at the same time the motor moving as I turn. There it goes. All the way. Like in the code, we did 1,600... Um, steps, which is equal to one full rotation of this shaft. So let me do it again. There you go. So you see it follows. Let me see if I can show it better. There you go. It's pretty fast. It responds pretty fast. And if I go all the way here, I'm at zero. So it's not skipping any steps all the way like this. Go back. And there you go. Now, in the code, we did that uh, plus and minus. Um, that way, even though the value of the analog uh, pot might fluctuate a little bit, the motor is not responding unless it goes over a certain threshold. So there you go. So that's one way to do it. It works fine for this, but you guys can uh, modify it as you wish and make it even better than this. So let's go uh, wrap it up. All right, so there you go, guys. This was a little Q&A uh, session. Uh, like I always say, send me your questions. If I know the answer, I'll, uh, I'll try to make a little quick video like this showing you guys uh, how I, um, I solved a problem or something like that. But like I always say, the way I do it is not the absolute way to do it. This is just a stepping stone for you guys so you guys try that code and then modify it and make it your own and make it even better. And uh, like I always say, that's the best way to learn. Um, I'd like to remind you guys, you know, if you're interested in buying parts to make Arduino projects, please visit our web store at greenabiz.com. We sell all the parts that we do tutorials and our videos with. And uh, if you come and buy some parts from us, it helps us a lot. And also, if you like these videos, please uh, subscribe to our channel and you'll get notified when we post new ones. So until next time, guys, my name is Ivan and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.